Hi everyone, Miss Patsy here at Castile Innovation Lab. Today we're going to be studying from the fifth grade science book, Mixtures and Solutions, Investigation 5, Fizz Quiz, Part 3, Reaction in a Zip Bag. Question, what happens when you mix substances with water in a bag? Let's find out. For today's investigation, we will be using baking soda, citric acid, calcium chloride, water, a funnel, filter papers, stir sticks, zip bags, and our chemical reactions placemat. Today we will be repeating the chemical reactions that we did in part one of our investigation, except today we will be doing them in Ziploc bags. So let's get started. In bag number one, we will be mixing the spoonful of calcium chloride, one spoonful of baking soda, and 50 mLs of water. I'm gonna squeeze out all the air and then just have a little opening for the water. And seal it up real quick. and observe what happens. And you remember that a chemical reaction is taking place because we can see that gas is being formed. Now, what do you observe is happening? You can see that the gas is making our bag puff up. And where did the gas come from? It came from our chemical reaction And what can we measure from doing this experiment in a bag that we couldn't m measure by doing it in a cup? If you said that we can measure how much gas is produced, you are correct. This is a one liter bag. It's not all the way full, but it's about three quarters full of gas. And that's something that, you know, we couldn't tell when we did this experiment in a cup. Next, let's go on to bag number two. We need one spoonful of calcium chloride one spoonful of citric acid, and 50 mLs of water. I'm gonna squeeze out all the air and seal it up except for a little bit, a little corner to add the water.
seal it really well and mix the water with the, our, our reactants. Like before, there's no bubbling or fizzing, so there's no gas produced. Let's move on to bag number three. Bag number three, we need a spoonful of baking soda. A spoonful of citric acid. Press out all of the air and seal the bag. Add 50 mLs of water to our corner. And you can see that this is uh, much more full of air than our reaction in bag number one. This chemical reaction actually feels cold to the touch. So let's look at our three bags. Which bag created the most gas? So let's look at our three bags. What happened in bag number one? We had a chemical reaction. We had gas produced. And we know that because our, our bag is puffy now. And we also remember that we produced a precipitate in this chemical reaction. In bag number two, no discernible gas was produced. Our bag still is pretty flat. There's a, a tiny bit of air in there, but we don't know if that's just when we added the water, some air might have gotten in. In bag number three, it produced um, a large amount of gas and it filled the whole bag with gas. In bag one, the reactants were calcium chloride, baking soda, and water. The products were a gas, a precipitate, and a salt solution. In bag number two, we know the reactants were calcium chloride, citric acid, and 50 mLs of water, but we really don't know if there was a chemical reaction. We do know that a solution was made. In bag number three, the reactants were baking soda, citric acid, and 50 mLs of water. And the products were a solution and gas. Next, we are going to do a reaction with all three of our dry substances.
one scoop of baking soda, one scoop of citric acid, one scoop of calcium chloride. Let's remove all the air. And then add our 50 mLs of water. Seal it up really quick. And shake. Do you think that this will produce more gas than in bag number three? Since we have more ingredients. It already feels a little tighter, so it does look like more gas was produced. Do you think it'll pop? Let's wait and see. Well, the bag is more firm. But it doesn't look like it's gonna pop. So why do you think that in bag one, we produced a precipitate, but in bag four, which has the same reactants in bag one, except we added an extra one, why didn't we get a precipitate in bag four? Well, the answer is that a different chemical reaction is going on in here. We will get a precipitate, but it's not gonna be the same one as we got in bag one. And it's gonna take longer to form. So we're going to, I'm gonna pause the video and come back when the precipitate has formed. Okay. Well, that took a lot longer than expected, but you can see a precipitate has formed in bag number four. It looks a little bit different than the precipitate in bag number one. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but it looks chunky. Whereas the precipitate in bag number one is more um, creamy. But let's test the precipitate in bag number four to see if it is the same as the precipitate in bag number one. squeeze out any excess moisture. Let's take some of the precipitate. Uh, why don't we do this with bag number one also, so we could do a side-by-side -side comparison.
So here's the precipitate in, cup, in bag number one, and here is the precipitate from bag number four. Now you can already tell that the precipitate in bag number one is, like I said, more soft and creamy. And the precipitate in bag four is very chunky and gritty. So let's test. Now we determined that the precipitate in bag number one was calcium carbonate, which is chalk, because it reacted with vinegar. So let's go ahead and add vinegar to that. And let's find out if our precipitate in bag number four is also calcium carbonate. see gas formation in with the precipitate from bag number one but we don't see any reaction with the precipitate from bag number four so the precipitate in bag number four is not calcium carbonate it's calcium citrate. So that's why it does not react with vinegar. So let's go back to our focus question. What happens when you mix substances with water in bags? Now we were able to observe and measure the amount of gas produced by our chemical reactions that we couldn't see in cups because the gas would dissipate into the air. So I hope you enjoyed our investigation for today. Until next time, have a great day.